Welcome to another episode of the Inguzo Babies podcast. I'm Miss Ashley, your storyteller. This week's story is called A Visit to the Museum. Let's begin. One Saturday morning in Littletown, our seven Inguzo Babies friends embarked on a special adventure with Abana's father, Father Leo, and her two brothers. They were headed to the local African History Museum. Although Abana had been there lots of times, the other friends had never gone together. Excited to be going on a field trip together, the friends made their way to the town's marvelous museum where history came alive. As they entered, they were greeted by the warm smile of Mama Amina, the museum curator. Mama Amina led them through the halls adorned with beautiful paintings, artifacts, and sculptures. She explained that Black history encompasses the rich stories of people from various backgrounds, countries, and experiences. She brought them to one particular exhibit called Celebrations. Filled with color and music, the children grew excited to see what stories the exhibit held. They began looking around. Kojo, whose father migrated from the Caribbean, found a painting showing people dancing joyfully at a carnival celebration. He recognized the vibrant costumes and rhythms and smiled at his people. Kofi smiled wide too, as he saw imagery of the Gwine Festival, which is a three-day festival in Mali. Though his parents were no longer with him, he was so happy to see something close to him and where he comes from in such a beautiful light. Ekwa marveled at a giant photograph of the Kojo Ligio Carnival in Mexico. She smiled at the people and imagined her grandparents parading in the streets as little children. She was proud to be Afro-Latina. Kwesi instantly grinned as he looked over the memorabilia reminiscent of the Homo Festival in Ghana. Hey, he started. This is to celebrate not being hungry anymore. He remembered his father telling him about its meaning when they attended in the past. Mama Amina smiled and nodded. Yes, it is. Celebrations can be about a lot of things. Birthdays, family, things we've overcome. Like how we celebrate Juneteenth, asked Ya. That's exactly right, added Father Leo. Absolutely. And while there are some parts of history that don't always make us feel good, when we choose to celebrate the good we have and how much we've overcome, we become a proud people. No matter what's happened to us, shared Mama Amina. The group continued to walk into the next exhibit. They discovered a painting of a cotton field, reminding them of the harsh times when some Black people were enslaved. Abena, whose family is Galagichi, realized that her family's story might have roots in that painful period. She turned to her father with a tinge of sadness and asked, How come our family had to do that? Her brothers, Kendrick and Cedric, turned to listen to Father Leo's response. Father Leo sighed. Well, that's hard to explain, Abena, but for many Black people, they weren't brought to the United States by choice. They were brought here to act as slaves. My family wasn't, stated Ama. They just moved here. The Inguzo babies looked at each other with a bit of uncomfortable silence. A question began to weigh on their minds. Ya decided to speak up and turn to Mama Amina. Why are we all called black when our stories are so different? Mama Amina smiled gently and replied, The term black is a way to unite and honor the beauty and strength of all of our diverse heritages. It represents the shared experiences, struggles, and triumphs of people with African ancestry, regardless of their specific backgrounds. The friends pondered Mama Amina's words some more, and while the Nguzo babies enjoyed the rest of their visit, in the back of their mind, they still had lots of questions. For so long they had played together, and though they knew their families came from different places, they still felt connected. But coming to the museum made them realize that they were different very different. Some of their stories were sad, others happy. How can we all celebrate when not everyone has a happy story? They needed answers. They decided to make their way to the treehouse. Ya, Ama, Abena, Kojo, Kofi, Kwesi, and Ekwa gathered around the magic canara, their candles ready for use in their small hands. Together, they placed their candles into the beautifully adorned canara, each flame flickering with anticipation. As they did so, a magical aura enveloped them, and with a shimmering burst of light, they were transported to the enchanting realm of Magicland. Emerging from the swirling mist, 
the Nguzo babies found themselves at the entrance of a magnificent structure, a magical art gallery. Its grandiose doors open wide, revealing a world filled with vibrant colors, swirling brushstrokes, and an ethereal atmosphere. The walls were adorned with breathtaking paintings, each canvas a gateway to a unique artistic world. As the children ventured deeper into the gallery, they discovered yet another winding staircase adorned with shelves of ancient books. Curiosity ignited within them, and they eagerly ascended the stairs, the sound of fluttering pages accompanying them with every step. It was there, amidst the towering shelves, that they encountered Fairy Adwa, their graceful and enchanting guide, her iridescent wings gently fluttering. Ndege greeted the Nguzo babies with a melodic chirp, as if welcoming them to this world of artistic wonder. Fairy Adwa extended her delicate hand, offering a warm smile to the young adventurers. Welcome, dear friends, Fairy Adwa said, her voice gentle and soothing. I'm so happy to see you. Ndege and I are here to guide you through this realm, where art comes to life and stories unfold. Eagerly, the Nguzo babies surrounded Fairy Adwa, their eyes sparkling with excitement. Let's embark on a journey through these captivating paintings, where imagination knows no bounds. With Fairy Adwa leading the way and Ndege falling behind, the Nguzo babies walked towards the first painting. It depicted the jubilant celebration of Juneteenth, a pivotal moment in Black history commemorating the emancipation of enslaved Africans in America. The vibrant colors and joyful faces within the painting seemed to radiate a sense of hope, liberation, beauty. This is beautiful, said Yah. They all look so happy, added Kwesi. I love celebrating Juneteenth, said Abena. Filled with curiosity, the Nguzo babies and Fairy Adwa approached the Juneteenth painting, feeling a magnetic pull toward it. With a shared determination, they stepped into the canvas, their surroundings transforming around them. They found themselves in the midst of the Juneteenth painting. However, it wasn't what they had seen when they were observing the artwork from outside. While there was celebration, it didn't look as vibrant or as colorful as what they had seen from the painting. There were lots of people, many crying tears of joy, but there were no party plates, no fireworks, and certainly no cake. This is different, said Abena. Yes, said Yah. There wasn't always a Juneteenth as we know it, shared Fairy Adwa. This was when the enslaved Africans were first given their freedom. This is a happy time as they were no longer forced to labor under such harsh conditions. Amidst the exhilaration and overwhelm, their attention was drawn to a young boy named Elijah. Tears streaming down his face. Concerned, the Nguzo babies approached him and gently asked him what was wrong. Elijah explained that his younger brother had fallen gravely ill from the speckled monster. I don't know what to do, he said. I just want him to get better. Speckled monster? asked the Nguzo babies. That's another way of saying smallpox, little ones, said Fairy Adwa. It's a terrible sickness. Yah, with her vast knowledge of plants, listened intently. With a sudden realization, she exclaimed, I know what you need. You need a pitcher plant. A pitcher plant? they all asked. Fairy Adwa smiled and said, Yah, I think it's your turn to use your powers. My flowers? Can they change? she asked. Your intention is what always drives your powers. Use your flowers to heal. Yah then closed her eyes and out popped a handful of pitcher plants that she gave to Elijah. She smiled. Use these and they should help. Elijah was grateful and thanked her, jumping up and down with glee. But they'll need more, Yah said, looking at her friends. Amma, always ready to use her magical paintbrush to assist, nodded with determination. With each stroke of her magical paintbrush, she conjured a lush field of pitcher plants, their vibrant hues and intricate designs coming to life within the painting, the air around them filled with the sweet fragrance and healing essence of the plants. Elijah, overwhelmed with gratitude and renewed hope, carefully plucked the leaves and nectar from the painted pitcher plants. Hurrying to his brother's side, he administered the miraculous remedy. 
the healing properties of the pitcher plant took effect almost immediately, bringing comfort and relief to his ailing brother. Soon his brother's strength returned, and his illness faded away. Tears of joy streamed down Elijah's face as he witnessed the miraculous recovery of his brother. The Nguzo babies, Feriadwa and Indege, shared in the celebration. Their hearts filled with awe at the power of unity, compassion, and the magical healing that had unfolded. Before leaving the painting, Feriadwa spoke. Let's remember that freedom is not merely the absence of chains, but also the opportunity to heal and rebuild. Just as the pitcher plant provides nourishment and restoration, so too must we support and uplift one another in our journey towards liberation. And with those profound words echoing, the Nguzo babies, Feriadwa and Indege, bid farewell to Elijah and his brother. They stepped back into the magical art gallery, happy to have been able to help Elijah. Just then, they encountered a second remarkable artwork. The painting depicted a young child reading a book. This, shared Feriadwa, is a painting representing the bravery and resilience of the students who protested against an unjust education system, a powerful representation of the Soweto uprisings in South Africa. We've come a long way from Texas, whispered Kofi. We've come a long way from Little Town, said Kojo. Intrigued, the group entered the painting, finding themselves in the midst of the tense protests. The Nguzo babies were terrified, never having seen so much strife back at home. What was once peaceful has now turned very violent by the officers. Children are being hurt, Feriadwa explained as they ran for cover. But why are they so angry? asked Kofi. Because these are children of the diaspora with many languages. They want to learn in the language in which they have come to know. It's how they learn best. But there are forces making it harder for them to learn by saying they can only learn in a language that is foreign to them. It's a language that doesn't represent where they come from. And so the children are protesting, using their voices, said Feriadwa. But the guards are using violence, shouted Ama. Oh, what can we do? asked Kojo. They realized that their presence within the painting granted them an opportunity to help once again, just as they did with Elijah and his brother. The Nguzo baby sprang into action, first with Kwesi pulling out his whistle to distract the police officers. Ekwa threw her slime to glue all of them together. Stuck, they could no longer harm the children of Soweto. For good measure, Kofi tied the police officers up with his magical rope. Stunned at the defeat, the children of Soweto thanked the Nguzo babies, and in celebration, Kojo began playing his drums. The children began to dance in celebration. Feriadwa looked at Abena, and Abena smiled, knowing exactly what to do. Abena pulled out her microphone, granting each child the chance to sing in color, in their language. Summon Zulu, summon Hosa, and many more along with the rhythms of Kojo's drum. The Nguzo babies smiled at all of the ways in which their new friends were able to come together and sing, even though their languages were different. This is like Little Town, noted Abena. Yeah, it is. The Nguzo babies smiled at each other, knowing it was time to go home. They looked at Feriadwa and she nodded. With a flick of her wand, the friends landed right back at the gallery, smiling at the two paintings next to each other. Black people are a strong people, Nguzo babies. To be black is to stand in power, no matter what adversity comes our way, Feriadwa said. Is that what being black is about? All the times we get hurt and then celebrate? asked Kofi. It's one of the things we've come to know that's part of our history, resilience and strength. But we are so much more than that. We're music and language and dance and healers and indigenous and magic and beautiful, said Yah. Yes, black is beautiful, said Feriadwa. Ama smiled as an idea came to mind. She waited until after they departed from Magicland back to Little Town and shared it with the Nguzo babies. Excited about the idea, they gathered paints, brushes, and a big canvas. Each friend used their imagination and talents to contribute. They painted bright colors, symbols, and pictures that represented the unique backgrounds of children of the diaspora and the joy in their hearts. Day after day, they worked together, adding more and more to the mural. It became a magical artwork that showed the beauty.